problem with survival gear is that usually it's very expensive. So I thought that today I would go to a budget store, see what I could find there, picked up a couple of things. I'm going to talk you through what I found, and we're going to see what this is all about. Okay guys, so I decided to go to a uh, budget store in town uh, where they uh, they sell a lot of surplus items. Not not army surplus, but uh, I mean overstocked items from stores. And uh, I paid 20 euros and 7 cents, which at the time I shoot this is about 26 dollars. Um, and I, I got a couple of items that I think could, could aid you in a survival situation. Now, um, just to be sure, when it comes to survival equipment, Clearly you want to buy the highest quality that you can afford. Why? Well, simply ask yourself the question, how much is my life worth to me? I'm not talking about happy camping, I'm talking about stuff that you may want to carry uh, if you enter some type of survival situation. And that can be just on a hike, you never know what happens. You can be ambushed by terrible weather, etc. You can just put it in your backpack. So that's the type of stuff we'll be talking about today. Okay, I got a little plastic bag full of stuff here. Um, and let's just go through it. Uh, I, I tried to stick to Dave Canterbury's uh, 10 C's of survival. I didn't, I, I mainly focused on the first five C's and the first of those is a cutting tool. So here we have a cutting tool. Um, this, I got a little receipt next to me, let me see how much I paid for this. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I paid 75 euro cents for this, so clearly this is going to be a high quality knife. Um, but hey, who knows, maybe I'm surprised. Let's just unpack that boy, see what we get here. Alright, so my impression is this feels cheap, this feels very plasticky. Um, the tolerances are not too great. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but uh, there's a pretty big gap there. Um, if you, uh, you check out my trusty Leatherman Ranger, you see there is no gap whatsoever. It's extremely tight tolerance. But, the thing is, this knife wasn't 75 cents. So, you can open it. You're supposed to be open it to be able to open it one-handedly with this little button. And that works, well, reasonably well. Um, maybe you can do something more flashy. No, I can't open it completely one-handedly. It says stainless, that means it's going to rust with your sweat, most likely. Um, it has a clip to put it on your belt or in your trouser pocket. Um, yeah, I'm not really too impressed with this rivet here. But, okay, but the real trick is cord, well not cord, is cutting. This is a completely serrated edge blade, except for this very small part there. Um, Alright, so let's see what this thing does with cutting. Yeah, that's uh, that's not the most comforting thing I've ever seen. I'm sure you can somehow get this to work, but I've got to tell you, I'm not too impressed. It has a nice serrated edge blade, but what this does is just ripping at the cord without really cutting. Um, zippity zappity. Right. So, 75 cents. Um, I'm, I'm not too impressed. Now, I mean, for example, you got this bit here, which is clearly a um, fine edge, a plain edge, not serrated. Uh, this is not sharp at all. I can just run my thumb over it. Now, of course, you can sharpen it yourself. Serrated edge is a little bit more difficult, but I might give that a shot and then we'll just see what we're going to get. Alright, let's pull out the next item. Here we got a Fire Steel 195. Just for fun, let's try this once more. Well, there we go. On plastic it works okay. Not particularly fine, but it's alright. Fire steel. Um, so a fire steel, of course, extremely useful. Combustion, uh, an important C. Um, what you do with the fire steel is you you create sparks. You throw sparks. Um, I'm not this plate. I think. 
Uh, yeah, I can warp that with, with two fingers, um, but all right. Um, so, first of all, what I notice here is that this chord is really uh, short, and that means that striking is going to be a little bit difficult, but all right. Um, what you do is you put this at about a 45 degree angle on there, and then you strike. Now, a little trick here, don't strike the actual metal part, but start here and then pull fire steel back. It will create the same type of friction, but then you don't hit your tinder all the time with your little um, steel. And um, what you have to do for this kind of thing is scrape off very carefully that black layer. It's a type of protection. Um, and then you can use your um, your striker to strike and maybe create a spark but I can't do that okay let's save the cord I can't really do that if I don't have enough motion I've got some water standing by here should you wonder um, I have no clue whether I can make this thing work because it doesn't look like the greatest quality but I do see some sparks so I probably wouldn't stake my life on this but I suppose in an emergency maybe if you use something like your knife blade which if that's carbon steel gives you a bit a little bit of a better purchase scrape off some more of that black stuff it may work. Now what I do notice is that the green stuff that's on here immediately comes off. Um, so maybe you're supposed to clean that off too. It doesn't say anything like that on the instructions, but um, personally, especially in a fire steel, if you can't afford something that's higher grade than this, then save up. Because this, it, you need to be able to make a fire to maintain your core temperature, so I would not stake my life on this at all. Alright, next item. What am I going to pull out? It's such a surprise. I got this. Now this is something that I guess is a little bit hard to, to screw up uh, completely. Uh, this is a hundred meters of fishing line, 89 cents. Of course you can have a much higher grade fishing line than this, but this is the type of stuff I'm gonna forgo that knife guys. Um, this is something that will probably, it is Graded for 6.5 kilograms at this price seems an extremely good deal to me so I'm assuming it will take a little bit less than that but hey um, feels pretty decent it doesn't snap straight away as soon as I touch it so that's better than some of the products we've seen so far um, I'm sure you can catch a fish, fish with this so you got something to provide yourself with food Okay, next item, uh, the fishing line was 89 cents as I said. Here we got some fishing hooks. Um, these are, I'm just checking my receipt again, uh, 89 cents as well. Um, fishing hooks, always good to have in a survival kit. Uh, you can put a couple in your survival tin or if you have such a thing. Um, it always makes a lot of sense to me. But of course it depends on your surroundings. If you find yourself stranded in the desert, then this is going to take up a lot of space and you don't really need it. Here we got a bunch of fishing hooks ranging from number 3 to number 12. Um, it's always good to bring... I have to be careful not to stab myself because that would typically be a thing I would do in a video. The um, thing about fishing hooks... I'm trying to get one out. And again, buck to the rescue. Um, there is not a really great hook on this to keep the fish on there um, but again in a pinch I will take it. The thing about fishing hooks is with a big hook you can only catch a big fish. With a small hook you can catch big fish and small fish. So ideally you would like to carry an assortment with you. Just carry a couple of them. Not one of each but you know a few smaller ones, a few large ones and maybe two medium ones or something that should um, get you sorted. So again you can get this in much higher quality but hey today we were on a budget so we gotta work for what we've got. 
here we got six tent pegs. Uh, that's always useful. This cost me 89 cents and uh, these look to me like pretty decent pegs. Now of course um, you put them in the ground you can put cord around it or maybe a tarp in there even. Um, nothing to keep them in the ground um, but you know, again, in a pinch, they don't weigh that much. You can take them with you, and if you're on a budget, you know, it saves you from having to uh, carve up a stick or um, find a tree. If there's absolutely nothing um, in the area, then at least you can use something like this. Um, just put them in deeply, and you know, if it doesn't really work out because they don't have enough perches, find yourself a rock or two, put them on there, whatever, so that you, you keep them in place. Um, and again for 89 cents, hey, it's not too bad. Okay, here we got something else that I thought might be useful. This is just um, some uh, bait. Um, and this is soft bait, sort of jelly-like uh, stuff. Uh, this, these are the lures. And, um, you know, I even got a couple with hooks on them. Um, so you got some, some, I think, some bobbers there. And then you got some soft lures. Now, good thing about this is that you can improvise this in the field if you're caught in a survival situation. Um, people have used all kinds of stuff for it. Little bits of bark, uh, bark from trees and that kind of stuff. Um, but I thought, you know, we may as well go for this. It feels extremely disgusting. It's sort of gelatinous and, and really disturbing, but if it attracts fish, it doesn't take up that much space to put one of these things in your um, survival kit, right? It, it's not the, the smallest item, but it is fairly pliable, so that should work. And um, for uh, one euro and 59 cents, I think you're pretty safe with this kind of stuff. You even get a little fish which is extremely disturbing. Anyway, so you got that. There are two more items in here. Um, one, uh, the first I got is, is this. Um, one of the five most important C's. So we've had cutting, we've had combustion. Um, here you got cord. You can improvise cord, but it's not so easy, so it's always recommended to take some. Now this is not a lot, it's 10 meters, that is n really not a lot. But in setting up a basic shelter, if you're lucky enough to find some trees, uh, then you, you may get away with it. Uh, this is 6 millimeter cord, and this is tested for 44 kilograms, that is a little under uh, 100 uh, pounds. So you will not be able to climb with this. Um, it is definitely not paracord, uh, 550 or even better 750, but hey, it's cord. And uh, it's easier to take a bit than to improvise it. And this cordage cost me uh, 98 cents. So, you know, I'll take it. Also, it's nylon, so you can um, uh, sear it shut if you need to cut it. Now, the biggest purchase I did uh, is something that I know I'm going to regret, but hey, I wanted to see what this was all about for you guys. A pair of binoculars, 10 by 50, um, and um, tell you a secret, uh, these cost 595 So I'm very interested in seeing what these are all about. They come with in a little carrying pouch. Now, this feels like I could just push my finger through it. It feels almost like paper. But, alright, a little bit of Velcro. Here we got our... It even has a little strap, which is so short that there's no way you can put this around your neck, but alright. Um, here we got our... Noculars. We got a little... Uh, strap to put them around your neck, put them on the, the binoculars. Okay, what about these things? feel rubbery, they feel very cheap. Um, but for $5.95, what can you expect? They got little rubber covers. They do have decently coated glasses. 
uh, or lenses. Um, but yeah, um, so the thing works. And look, you even get a compass on there. Now, what I would like to see is, I forgot to pick it up in advance, sorry. I'm just taking out my rector. Notice how I said rector, I didn't say rectum. Um, this is my old rector compass. This is a beauty. Uh, it's not cheap, but this is a compass I would stake my life on. Swiss made and all. Uh, um, it's uh, it's fluid filled and all that, uh, so this is a very nice one. Even has a, a mirror you can use for signaling and stuff. Um, let's take that out so you can see it a bit better. So when this thing says north, I'm sure that that is um, magnetic north. All right. Um, now our binoculars tell me that north. See how this thing moves when I tap the binoculars? That's really comforting. Well, it's roughly north, right? It's not exactly great, but it's in the area, I suppose. Um, which is not bad, considering it could be completely off, which we have to admit it's not. Um, so, okay, that's one thing. Now, what I'm very interested in is seeing the image quality. Uh, I'm going to stand up for a second, I'm going to look outside with my new binoculars and I'll keep talking. The first thing I see is that the image is extremely blue. It is, it's very, uh, very blue. Um, focusing works, it's not very smooth and there is a lot of chromatic aberration. So when I look at trees far in the distance uh, then they have a sort of purplish sheen uh, against the backlight and also um, they are not crisp, the image is not crisp. Um, so in that regard I am not too impressed. So yeah, that is $5.95 worth of binoculars for you. That really was to be expected guys. Um, but you know, I thought I'd give it a shot. You get a little compass, it doesn't really work perfectly but it should point you in what is approximately north, right? Okay, now the final thing I got, which I'm very interested in testing out, is this compass. Um, it's one of those compasses that comes with a bunch of uh, side tools on them. Um, little plate. I think this one actually has an information booklet in there, which is not bad. Uh, this compass cost me one euro and 79 cents, which is a little less than my Recta compass cost me. Um, but, you know, uh, let me see. It says north is that, that direction, um, which is very interesting because I happen to know that north is exactly the opposite direction. Now, if we bear in mind that maybe they did something wrong in labeling that needle, then it's actually not bad, because it points in pretty much the same direction, um, except north, south, mirrored. So if I were to use this on this hemisphere, or whatever, and I would assume that the needle is colored incorrectly, so I just take the white needle, then I am actually not too disturbed by the whole thing. Although it's definitely not the greatest compass I've ever seen. Now, to be honest, this thing has a couple of things going for it. Uh, it's got some measuring devices. Um, it has a loop. Loop is always useful. If nothing else, you can use it for fire starting with the, when the sun is, uh, is you, you got sun. It's got stuff for measuring uh, on maps, etc., uh, which is not too bad. So, this is not a tool that I would really um, stake my life on. But, one of the five C's, you got a compass um, to, you know, find your way home, approximately. Now, there are a few items I was looking for but I couldn't really find. One of the C's is a container 
very good for water storage. Now I got this, um, my, my favorite uh, canteen here. Um, and I like about, I've, I've reviewed this thing, it's a Bear Grylls canteen. What I like about it is that in the bottom, the bottom of the pouch, there is a aluminum or aluminium for our European friends um, drinking cup. Beauty of alu aluminium is that you put water and you can put it on the fire, uh, which you cannot do with a plastic canteen, obviously, because it would melt. Um, I was looking for a nice metal drinking cup in this store, but I couldn't find it. So that's something that I would add. Uh, you know, it's always good for storage, for cooking, etc. Um, so I would add something like that. Also, something that you may want to add uh, is uh, a lighter. Um, I mean, fire steel is, is great, but why do something difficult when you can just have fire like that? And even if it doesn't work anymore, it still throws sparks. Um, so, they they did sell them at the store, but I already have one. I don't smoke, so I don't use up these things a whole lot. Um, so, some type of container and maybe a lighter I would add. Uh, I saw a sleeping bag for 1250. Uh, that's not a bad deal. Problem is probably that it's nylon, and that means that uh, if you're close to a campfire and you know there's a bit of a, an ember flying out and it hits your sleeping bag, uh, that's not too great. Okay, so final thing that I bought that I want to show you. It's going to be a little bit difficult to show you this, so I'm going to zoom out as much as I can. Um, this is not too bad. This was uh, four euros and thirty-nine cents, and this is a tarp. Um, and you can use this, it's three by four meters, it has little uh, rings in there, so it, it has those grommets in there, which means you can use it to make shelter. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty flat, you can probably fold it over once more, and then you have something that you could even put in a, um, a, a backpack, and you could use this for an emergency shelter. Uh, or just sleep on it, or something like that. Um, it's probably not the highest quality in the world, but again, it's a tarp and it will give you one of the C's, namely cover. Um, in a pinch, I will take that. And I think that is one of the better items that I, I got in this store today. So, just a brief summary. I spent about 20 euros. I would not trust a lot of the stuff I got, but I would trust some of those things. Question is, would I stake my life on any of those things? Uh, no. If I was in a survival situation, give me this any day of the week and give me this uh, maybe when uh, uh, there is absolutely nothing else I'm allowed to take. Um, but, you know, you really get what you pay for in these kinds of situations. You can buy a five dollar multi-tool, it's going to serve you well until you cut hard wire once and then the whole thing warps. Um, you can also buy a Leatherman which is going to cost you a hundred dollars and that's going to cost a lot more. But you can pass that one on to your grandchildren. So in this case, I really would not skimp and be cheap. But if you are on a budget, as you've seen, there are things you can do. Not all of them are equally great, but it is what it is. So, uh, guys, I hope this was useful. A bit of survival gear on a budget. Um, and uh, I'll see you later.